Good afternoon, friends. Uh, and uh, good afternoon, uh, Ma'am Chitra Sampan, the senior advocate of Medrasa. I, on behalf of Beyond Law CLC, welcome you all to yet another webinar by which we can all improve our knowledge as we believe in the principle of that sharing is caring. As long as we are sharing the knowledge, it gives one a different perspective of law and understanding of law. In a pursuit for having speakers who can share their insights, we requested Ma'am Chitra Sampath, a senior advocate from Madras High Court, to give the insights on the topic of security interest in mortgages, a bane or a boom. That is a different facet to be discussed, but to have ma'am on giving the insights on this topic is definitely a boon not only for the lawyers, students of law, and all those who are directly and indirectly connected with the matters and perspective of law. Though ma'am does not require as such any introduction, but brief is that she has been also training uh, in the Judicial Academy, which speaks volumes of her knowledge. And her insights given on different perspectives of law, which have already been uploaded on the YouTube, etc. The number of shares and likes are a testimony of the fact that the insights given by her is well latched upon by not only the participants during the platform and even thereafter. Though we have taken, I can say, just like a tip of an iceberg of her knowledge to be shared on this, she has been sharing, uh, she has knowledge in different spectrums of law, that is writs, law of property, rent control law, company law, winding up, probate, interstate, Hindu law, specifically that. This only shows that her knowledge is as vast as one could imagine. And to have the knowledge being shared by a person of such a status, it gives us immense knowledge. Over to you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. I'm grateful to Vikas for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk on a topic which I love most as a trial lawyer. Mortgages has always been an elusive subject for many juniors. And uh, the very nomenclature has always put some shivers down the spine and people right to run away from mortgages while practicing on the legal side. But that has become the order of the day. Day in and day out, we are facing with different type of mortgages, securities, interests, and the whole world now whirls around and spins around the creation of mortgages and loans. So I took this opportunity to say something about it, which I have learned. And I shall be concentrating more on the mortgages in the second part of my lecture. And uh, my introduction to you is, today why we are in this particular scenario and whether this creation of mortgages or securities, in other words, has been helpful to the human society for their upliftment of their causes or it is actually a deterioration in the Kali Yuga is what I pose a question to myself. In the olden days, a person is not supposed to borrow. If he borrows, he's supposed to commit a sin. And when he departs this world, he has to go without any leaving any debt. Therefore, under the Hindu law, what I have learned from Raghavacharya, Maine's Hindu law, it has been that if a man dies with some debts, even though he may not have left properties, but he has left only debts for his children to inherit. It was the pious obligation of the sons to have, to discharge it without any demand. The same thing also applied to Mohammedan law. And I was in fact surprised when I was looking up the Google, which gives all the answers to you. Under the Shafi Islamic law, a person, when he borrows, though he assures the return, he returns once in the principal and the creditor is not supposed to charge interest. That was interesting to learn 
that a creditor will not charge interest because according to them they are lending a helping hand to a person in need and in case he imposes some penalty as per the terms of contract the penalty will go only towards charity and it not go to the personal pockets of the creditor this seems to be the law which is being dispensed in the islamic world but not that way in our country therefore we just just thinking a little looking back i found that how we have been changing our attitude towards borrowal starts from the fact that for our day to day life we have been borrowing by way of a higher purchase agreements for buying our necessities we started buying on in installments sarees as ladies we started buying mixi we started buying grinder we bought a scooter we bought a cycle we bought an ac then we bought something else. all the household consumer durables were purchased only by way of higher purchase installments so now we have become immune to this concept of loan becoming a sin now what happens is for buying a house we also start borrowing now the banks are flush with funds they have to invest somewhere there are some people who are in, you know, flush with funds they want to get return so in the indian continent there is no bar for getting interest or return so no person in india will be giving any lending any money unless he gets a good return on his investment so this is how the progress went and today the credit card zoom a boom has come and everybody is having a credit card what are we doing with the credit card is what a question to ask myself initially they were unless i hold a particular uh, account with so much of balance they used to give me a credit card in fact i could even say that as an advocate when i applied for a credit card the bank said no i cannot give you a credit card because you are an advocate then i fought with him and i said i am happy holding you a bank account in my name or you know we as a policy we don't want to give credit card to advocates then i had to really fight with the bank manager to get a credit card but there are banks which are giving credit card even without an account why because they want to have more return on the amount they are having in their accounts so now the credit card oh wow how oh, be also because of this covid and everything we are not going to use any cash transaction when there is no tran- cash transactions we are trying to use credit cards so oh, this whole thing goes so how you are going to get credit see as far as credit card is concerned it depends upon how you have been having an operations in the bank the, the uh, customer is uh, trusted and then the credit card is sent now but how we progress slowly so only we start getting loans for various other aspects like car we are going to get a loan for our house so these are all ways in which the banks give the other financial institutions give even individual uh, money lenders give but on what basis can i trust you i don't know you neither you may have your aadhar card you may have a ration card but how will i trust you you can trust me only when i give you something to hold on for as an assurance that i get i can realize my money so that is called the security see there are three types of securities which are there which in the field one is a form of pledge we call the other one is called a hypothecation next is a mortgage what are the differences between these three pledge and hypothecation refer to movables or goods they don't refer to creation of security over an immovable property what is a pledge pledge is a thing where i don't give my movables to the creditor he gives me money like a jewelry loan gold loan or where i go and keep my share certificates and take loan so the movables which are in my hand goes to the hands of the creditor he keeps it in safe custody like a bailey you know you all know about bailee or bailey relationship then he retains it and if you when you return the money with interest as per the contract he gives back your goods otherwise he is entitled to sell and realize the dues this is called the pledge this is one form of security the next one is hypothecation hypothecation is a place there is a concept where the goods are not given to the creditor but it is kept with the debtor the debtor retains possession of the goods but borrows money on the basis of these goods and once he repays the loan is discharged what will happen because goods are not with the creditor it's only with the debtor 
So the creditor will have a right to come and seize the goods, realize his dues. See, this is the hypothecator. Why, where we get all this? It is all in these vehicle loans, uh, where they have, a, even in a, my machinery purchases, where they hypothecate the machinery and they get it discharged. The next comes the mortgages. The mortgages is over an immobile property. So when an immobile property or a property which is embedded in the earth is given as a security to a creditor, it is called a mortgage. All other forms are not mortgages. Only immobile property or property which is embedded in the earth. See, there may be machineries which cannot be moved just like that. They'll be fixed to the earth with the concrete and all that. So it will be treated as almost equal to an immovable property. So they are all treated as immovable property which are embedded to the earth. And when that is mortgaged, it is called, it has to be by way of a registered instrument. Now we'll come to pledges. Pledges are over. It is by way of an independent contract. The creditor, position is given to the creditor. That is over. Hypothecation, position is with me. The creditor is having a right to seize and sell. It is like any other HP agreement for sale of uh, uh, vehicles and all that. Next, the third one is the mortgages. Now, as far as the pledging and hypothecation is concerned, it is very simple. They can seize and sell. The no court proceedings are required. Any balance due, they can file a suit for recovery of money. That is done. For mortgages, now mortgages are the basis on which today's entire bank transactions financial institution transactions are being built. Now, let us first understand the concept of mortgages. Mortgages are defined under and explained under section 58 to 98 of the Transfer of Property Act. Now, what are the types of mortgages we have? Why we should have so many mortgages? Because each person will have a different type of transaction. So in order to see that each person's requirements are satisfied, and the remedy is also different. Each mortgage will have a different remedy. The mortgage will have a different remedy. Mortgage will have a different remedy. Now, let us go one by one. What are all the first types of mortgages under the terms for property? Act? Simple mortgage. Next is the usufructory mortgage. Next, we have mortgage by deposit of title. Next is mortgage by conditional sale. That is also called an English mortgage. Next, we have an anomalous mortgage. Therefore, the uh, types of mortgages are clearly defined under the mortgage, uh, transfer of property. Now, let me take simple mortgage first. Why we call it a simple mortgage? Because the transaction is simple. The man borrows. He gives his property as a security to the creditor. His creditor is called the mortgagee. And they have to execute a document which has to be registered under the Registration Act. Because Section 17 of Registration Act requires that any transaction by way of mortgage, since it creates interest in the property, it has to be registered. So over 100 rupees, it has to be registered. So it has to be registered. And moreover, just like a will or a settlement deed, mortgage deed also has to be attested by two witnesses as per Section 68 of the Evidence Act. If you don't have proper attestation, then the mortgage deed cannot be entered. So any mortgage document, if it creates an interest in a property which is worth more than 100 rupees, it has to be by a registered instrument attested by at least two witnesses. This is the requirement of basic requirement of all mortgages. Now in a simple mortgage, what is this? It's like a promissory note, literally. The mortgage credit data says, here I'm going and borrowed so much of money from you. I will pay this back to you uh, with interest at so much of rupees. So till I pay the amount with interest, you keep this property with you. That is the property will be uh, secured to you. And in the event of any default, you can proceed against this property, sell it and realize it. This is all a simple mortgage is what is con contemplated. Now, what is the remedy of the mortgage in these simple mortgages? What is my remedy? I want to go and redeem the property. I'll go to the mortgage creditor, give the money, get a document which says discharge the receipt. The discharge receipt also has to be registered under law. It cannot be uh, just put a uh, cancel it and give it has to be registered under law. So now you get a discharge receipt, it will be over. Suppose there is a tiff between the uh, creditor and the debtor regarding the amount paid. That is where that is all the dispute that can arise in the simple mortgage. So the debtor says, no, no, so much of money is due. 
but the Kanita says no more about you. He levies penal interest. He puts uh, other uh, uh, charges. I have to safeguard the property. So the mortgage uh, what he can do is he can come to the court. We call to file a suit for redemption. Redemption means a right to take back the property after discharge of the mortgage. It is called redemption. So a suit for redemption is filed by the mortgage uh, that is the debtor against the creditor saying that this is all the amount due. I am willing to deposit this amount in court. Please give me a decree for redemption of the property. Now the creditor will contest and take a, uh, the suit will be decreed. Now in this suit, I'll come to that, how these decrees are drafted in a subsequent uh, slide for under order 34. So when the uh, redemption right is given to the mortgage. Now, what is the remedy of the mortgage? He has borrowed, he is not paying the money. It's a simple mortgage. He's not paid any interest. Can the mortgagee keep quiet? He has to come to court within 12 years from the date when the amount becomes due. In a simple mortgage, the amount becomes due on the date of execution of the document itself. So within 12 years, as per Article 62 of the Limitation Act, he has to come and file a suit for recovery of money due on the mortgage. Otherwise, his remedy is barred under law. So mortgagee creditor will have to approach the court within 12 years under Article 62 to recover his money and enforce the mortgage. On the contrary, the mortgagee is given 30 years to redeem this property under Article 61. So he has to 30 years to redeem this property, whereas mortgagee is given only 12 years to sue for this mortgage money. This is as far as the uh, simple mortgage is concerned. We have one other aspect in a simple mortgage. In the presidency towns of uh, Bombay, Calcutta and uh, Madras, when the British were there, they were also giving a lot of loans and all that. So they wanted to have a private uh, power to sell the property. So they brought in section 69. You can remove, you can see the Transfer of Property Act is of the year 1882. It has not been amended or revamped subsequently except for some minor changes. Now what happened was these British rulers decided that in these presidency towns, when we give loan, we want to have our right to realize the money. So we will retain one uh, section 69 of the Transfer of Property was incorporated which gave a right of sale, private sale, to the mortgage. That's why even today, in Section 69 of Transfer of Property Act, it is basically say it will apply only to residency towns, or presidency towns of Madras, Bombay, and Calcutta. So in these cases, where a simple mortgage is executed, it is open to the parties to agree for a private sale also under Section 69. It's not available. That remedy is not available in any other district or any other state. So what happens in the section 69 is the mortgagee will decide, yes, you have not paid me the money. I'm going to bring the property for sale. You have not paid me the interest. I'm going to bring the property for sale. So he'll bring, he'll make an announcement. He has first to give a notice. He'll make an announcement. Then he'll put up it in public auction. He can realize the money. He can himself execute the sale date and done with it. Only for possession, the purchaser has to come to the court. So this sweeping power is given to the mortgage. We have I have come across several cases under Section 69 where a mortgager has been really uh, put into trouble because of the improper conduct of the sale of the uh, exercise under Section 69. But our remedy is very limited. The mortgager can only ask for compensation if there is going to be an irregular sale. He can never seek to set aside the sale. In fact, there is a leading judgment of the uh, Madras High Court which has been reported in 2013 uh, which Lordship Justice Ram Subramaniam has said that Section 69 power is left to the mortgagee to decide. And it is for him to decide to whom he can sell. And even in the auction sale, he will decide whether to go ahead with the auction, whatever. There's no rule. He will even, even violate the terms and conditions of the auction notice. The court cannot be, cannot be questioned in a court of law. That's what the, the judgment is. Very sweeping in that. But I feel that I, my, my personally feel that 69 should also be read down and uh, the principles of uh, setting aside sale under order 21 rule 89 and other proceedings should also be adopted but that is this is a judgment today so for simple mortgage we have these uh, uh, requirements and the redemption right is given to the mortgagee and a power of sale is given to the mortgage now we go to the usurpatory mortgage 
What do you mean by usurpatory mortgage? It is a possessory mortgage. What is a possessory mortgage? Today I have a property, a house property in Chennai. And I want to create a loan over it. What I do is, I'm not in a position to pay interest per month. So what I do, I give the property itself to him. And I record the fact in the mortgage, it's deed itself, that I'm putting you in possession of this property. You can realize the rent from this or towards the rent, the whatever rent you realize can be adjusted towards the interest and the principal. And after the expiry of so many years, say 10 years or 5 years or 15 years, I'll pay back the principal if it is not otherwise adjusted and take back the property. So the possession will be with the mortgage. When possession is given to the mortgagee and he is in enjoyment in lieu of interest alone or lieu of interest plus part of the principal that is depending upon the contractual terms, it is called a usurpatory mortgage. Now, very interesting aspects in usurpatory mortgage is more from the southernmost districts of Tamil Nadu, from Kanyakumari. We call that as Oti, O-T-H-I, Oti. In these Oti, you can, even now you can come across cases where 1924 uh, OT, 1934 OT has been, uh, is being sought to be redeemed even in 1990s, 1920s. Case laws have been developed. So the question arose, what is the remedy of a use for free mortgage and what is the remedy of a mortgage R in a use for free mortgage? A very interesting reading is the mortgage continues to have this right of redemption, which is the period of 30 years under Article 61. Whereas mortgagee has got no right to come to court. He has to be in enjoyment of the property, enjoy, realize the money and stay put. That's all. He cannot come to court for asking for sale. He cannot come to court saying he will not be a mortgager, will not be entitled to redeem the money. He has got no such power. If he comes to court for realization of his money, then it means he has abandoned his security. He is not insisting on the enforcement of the mortgage. So use of free mortgage cannot come to court. So what happens is the mortgage mortgages sit tight because use of free mortgage is not going to come to court. So okay, let me be happy. I will not pay interest. He is in enjoyment. I can redeem it anytime. So the question arose: What is the period of limitation for a person who is a free mortgage to come to court? So there was a conflicting views which said it will start from the day on which when there's no period is fixed under the contract, use free mortgage. What normally uh, we have seen in use free mortgage is from today within 10 years, I will redeem and then after uh, after the expiry of 10 years, I'll pay the principal amount and then uh, I'll redeem the mortgage. So then the 30 years uh, limitation under Article 61 of Limitation Act will start running from the day when the 10 year period expires. So 10 years and then after 30 years, so you'll have 40 years to redeem. Whereas you know, there was a case where no time is fixed under the contract. So the question was, some judges, Supreme Court said, no, it will start from the date on the date of mortgage. The court said, no, when no time is fixed, it means that if unless and until the entire interest of the principles are adjusted out of the income from the property, the right of redemption to the mortgage does not arise. So there's no period of limitation. We can sue any time. So that was the law that has been laid down by the Supreme Court. In fact, uh, uh, on this, uh, the judgment is 2018, 5 SCC, page 341, 2018, 5 SCC, page 341. Ma'am, I have also allowed you the screen sharing part. If you want that, you can do it. Not what? The? Screen sharing. You wanted the screen sharing that has been allowed to you. Oh, no, I know. I'm not going into that. I'm going to give the PPT to you uh, okay. the after final so that you can circulate. Okay, ma'am. Okay. That's fine because I'm just giving some of them in between itself. Okay. The, 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 for the usurpatory mortgages, mortgages right to redemption starts upon the expiry if any is prescribed under the document. If no time is fixed, till such time the entire uh, use of trucks is utilized for the discharge of the mortgage amount under the and the interest. Now, the, as I said, usurpatory mortgagee has got no power to approach the court for any remedy. You can note down the case law 2003 3 SCC 614 2003 volume 3 SCC 
six one four. Now the mortgagee is in possession of the property. What he is going to do? He can he create interest in the property? Can he lease it out? Is all a question which will come to your mind because I, I the mortgagee is already first pick funds. He may be residing in another house. He may have palatial houses. Why he should occupy this property? So he can rent it out. But the whatever lease mortgagee creates over the property will be only during the period of subsistence of this mortgage. Once the period of uh, it is redeemed by the mortgagee, the right of lessee. To continue in possession also ceases, so he has to be evicted as per law. Next, we will go to the mortgage by deposit of title deeds, which is the present day trend adopted by all financial institutions and the banks. What do you mean by deposit of title deeds? When you own a property, you have documents of title with you. You will have the registered sale deed. And you will have the antecedent documents of title. Then you will have the spotta or the revenue records, and you would have paid electricity charges. So all these will show that you are the owner of the property. So this is are all called the documents of title. This document of title, which are in original, shall be handed over to the creditor on the assurance, on the with the intention that I am borrowing so much money from you. You keep these original documents with you. In the event I don't return it within a within a time frame or whatever is agreed between the parties, you are entitled to proceed with the sale of these properties. So after a simple mortgage where there is a power of sale to the mortgage, we have a right to sell under the mortgage in the deposit of title deeds. Now this power of deposit of title deeds, which is there with the mortgage, is what is now exercised by the banks under the DRT, under the Surface, and the Straight Financial Corporation. Or under a simple mortgage. So these are only the two types of mortgages which are being adopted by various institutions for lending money to the various borrowers. Now, what do you mean by deposit of title deeds? Can I, without having handing over the documents of title, create a mortgage? No. The three conditions which are very much necessary for deposit of title deeds are: there must be a creditor-debtor relationship, and there must be an existence of debt. First. So, without a debtor-credit relationship, there cannot be any deposit of title deeds. Number two, there must be an actual deposit of documents of title. Next, third is this documents of title must be with an intention to create it as a mortgage or as a security for the loan. In fact, in one of my cases, when I was uh, uh, in the high, in honorable high court, there was a compromise decree. So, where well, my client was supposed to have submitted to a decree. That was a suit on a mortgage by deposit of title deeds. So when I said that there was a fraudulent decree, I filed an application to set aside the compromise decree and said that it is obtained by fraud and impersonation. I also took out an application asking the plaintiff to produce the original documents of title said to have been deposited by me under document number three mentioned in the claim. So that application came before his lords of justice, David Christian J, who was then sitting on the original side of the high. The because lots of then they ask for a time for counter. You know what the learned judge says? What is this? You have filed a suit on the basis of documents of deposit of title deeds, mortgage based on deposit of title deeds. You should be having those original documents under your pillow in your house. Go and bring it and deposit. I am not giving you any time for counter. Petition allowed. But the plaintiff had not produced even a single document to show whether there was any deposit of title deeds. Ultimately, the compromise decree was set aside. But however, the matter went up to Supreme Court. I am not going to on the on the other issues. But what I am saying is, for creating a mortgage by deposit of title deeds, the original document deposit is assigned to a non for the existence of the mortgage. If it is not there, then there is a merely writing a letter saying I have deposited title deeds with you. All that that is totally irrelevant. There must be an actual custody of the original documents with the mortgage here. That is the creditor. Now, what is the remedy for a mortgage? Are it is like a simple mortgage. So, I'll be the mortgage is entitled to file a suit for redemption. If it is a mortgagee, he is entitled to sue for sale of the hypotheca. That is what is provided under the uh, act, and it will be having all the limitation aspects same as the uh, simple mortgage. 
Next, we have the mortgage by conditional sale, or we call it as an English mortgage. This is by far, I feel, the most toughest mortgage, and it has been a, a matter of uh, varying and uh, conflicting judgments, both by our High Court as well as by the Supreme Court. In one case, they'll say that this is sufficient and this is required. In another case, they'll say, no, even if you bring in this, there's no existence of it. So they say it's a culminator of so many factors to make it to do a market by conditional sale. Now, what, let us understand what is market by conditional sale. So instead of executing a market saying that I, I, owe the, I have borrowed so much of money from you, I'll uh, tell, pay so much interest and I'll take back uh, the property, I, the, I'll discharge the mortgage loan and, uh, and get the mortgage discharge later. Instead of writing it like that, here there'll be a document which will be styled as a sale deed itself. The sale deed will specifically say, this is the amount paid by so-and-so to so-and-so. That is, the creditor has paid to the debtor so much of money and the, 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 upon the completion of so many years, the, the debtor shall make the payment or re refund the said purchase money to so and so upon such refund, the creditor shall retransfer the property to the debtor. No, I'm for your understanding, I'm saying as debtor and creditor. But in the sale deed, it will only mean as seller and purchaser. So the purchaser will be a creditor and the seller will be the borrower. So the purchaser will give money to the seller on condition that the seller on refunding that such money within a particular time frame, he will execute a uh, reconveyance deed. So that will be that is being called as a mortgage by conditional sale. Now there were several authorities which has come which said the, 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 doc, the, the right to reconvey, that is a contract to reconvey must be incorporated in the sale deed itself. If I, the sale deed is complete and there is another document or another agreement by which there is a right of reconveyance then it cannot be a mortgage by conditional sale then it can be only separate, treated as a separate agreement of sale. So we were all under the belief, yes, once the term is incorporated on the document itself, there's no, it's a foolproof uh, method, therefore it will be straight away mortgage by conditional sale. But that has been now given a go by by the Supreme Court in the latest judgment in 2019, 8 SEC, page 651. 2019, 8 SEC, page 651. By this, what has happened is, the Supreme Court says, even if it has been incorporated in the same document, still the court can find out whether there was an intention to create a mortgage or it is an outright sale. Now, what are all the various other requirements for making it an outright sale? One. First and foremost, they say to make to render a sale deed as one of mortgage by conditional sale, there must be a debtor and creditor relationship. There must be a, a, a no payment of interest or rate of foreclosure or sale. Then this be, must be possession is must be in lieu of interest. There must be inadequacy of consideration. Suppose today the market value of the property is 10 crores and you sell the property for 6 crores, then it says, it presumes that there is an existence of it is only a debtor-creditor relationship. Then what is the conduct of the parties subsequent there? Whether there has been actual transfer of position, whether there has been a revenue transfer. So many other culminating factors were considered by the Supreme Court and now has said, mere because it is recorded in the same document, the sale deed will not become a mortgage by conditional sale. We have to look into various other aspects also. Now, this is the what is mean by mortgage by conditional sale. Now, what is the remedy of the mortgagor and mortgagee in these cases? Now we accept that it's going to be a mortgage by conditional sale. Yes, the mortgagor has a right of redemption, Article 61, 30 years, he can file a suit for redemption. Okay, fine. Now what happened to the uh, creditor, mortgagee? He will be given a right of foreclosure, not sale. Please understand, there's a difference between a suit for sale and suit for foreclosure. What do you mean by foreclosure? You, sale means realizing the property, just sell it, get the money. Yes. But what do you mean by foreclosure? Now, here is a creditor who has already got a registered sale deed in his name. What he requires, he says the mortgagor should not redeem the property. 
if that is done the sale will become perfect he need not go for sale because once he sells he will lose the property of the sale he is in this way therefore what they say is it is called a right of foreclosure so the mortgagee in a case of a mortgagee by conditional sale will specifically file a suit asking for the court to declare that the mortgagee has defaulted in payment of money so if there no further money is payable therefore declare that his right to redemption is foreclosed so he is asking the authority of the court to declare that the mortgagee shall not be allowed to redeem the property and the property will stay with the mortgagee that is the plaintiff or the mortgagee was filing suit for foreclosure so this is the concept of foreclosure in a mortgage by conditional sale then the last but not the least is a anomalous mortgage what do you mean by anomalous mortgage anomalous mortgage is where the, the, they don't come within any of these parameters of usurpatory mortgage or a simple mortgage or a mortgage by conditional sale there are uh, inter uh, changes in those cases it is called as an anomalous mortgage and they will have the same rights which are incorporated in the document the parties are free to contract the way in which they can work out their debt so this is as far as the various mortgages are concerned now coming to the another aspect in the mortgage is called marshalling of securities what do you mean by marshalling of securities it is provided under section 81 of the transfer of property act now i have two or three properties i mortgage two properties with one x and other the two properties with one y now the x man wants to sell the property so when he is bringing it for sale the y man can say please don't sell the property which has also been mortgaged to me you sell the property which has not been mortgaged to me you have got another security you try to realize from that if you are not able to get it then go for the property which is having a common mortgage this is called marshalling of security which is permitted under law so when there are more than two or three properties mortgage to two or more persons the subsequent mortgagee can ask the prior mortgagor not to proceed against the sorry the property which are mortgaged to him but to proceed against other properties it is only uh, uh, it's a statutory right has been given but they can contract out of the statute also next we have a concept called subrogation what do you mean by subrogation now a uh, mortgagor is uh, not alone he will have a lessee in his property he may have other co-owners who are also interested in the property there are various other creditors who will be interested in his property and there may be a person who is a surety or a grant a guarantor who has secured the loan so all these persons will be interested in safeguarding the mortgage property besides the mortgagor so in those circumstances when the mortgagee wants to bring the property for sale so what they do is they can these people who are interested in safeguarding the property and as well as their interest they can go and discharge the mortgage so okay they go and discharge the mortgage now what is the remedy they can only sue for money but will their money be secured no it has to be secured on the property which has got been obtained by way of release that's where the concept of subrogation is provided under 91 and 92 of the transfer of property act by this what the legislature says is if i as a surety or a guarantor of the mortgagee i offer myself and i go discharge the mortgage from the mortgagee what happens i have flow money has flowed from me to the mortgagee so the mortgagee or that mortgage it is deemed to have taken over the mortgage and i will become the mortgagee it deemed to be mortgagee and i can proceed against the very same property if the mortgagor does not settle my claim so i actually stand step into the shoes of the mortgagee and i'll be entitled to enforce the mortgage rights this is called a doctrine of subrogation now there is a slight distinction between subrogation and assignment of a mortgage now a mortgage which is mortgagee when he assigns his interest the mortgagee shows the assignment assignor assignee takes it over and he will sue on the mortgage there's no problem but i representing the mortgagor go and discharge the mortgage here i go and step into the shoes of the mortgagee it is called as subrogation even a co-mortgagor 
whether he is entitled to uh, the doctrine of subrogation was uh, discussed with the Supreme Court. A co mortgagor is not entitled to subrogation. It's a very interesting aspect. Here also, the co mortgagor is where there are two persons who are jointly mortgaging the property. One person is refusing to take a redemption, the other person is interested in uh, going and redeeming and saving the property from auction. So the co mortgagor goes and uh, discharges the mortgage. Can he sue on the mortgage? No, because he is also a co mortgagor. He cannot sue on the mortgage. He can only sue for contribution from the co monitor. This is the law on the subject. Now I go to the miscellaneous rights of parties uh, between the mortgage and the mortgage, which will uh, fall for consideration under the Surface Act and all that. Once you have created a mortgage, it will always be a mortgage. You can never turn your or uh, whether you are put in possession or you are in whatever right, unless the mortgage is discharged. The mortgagee continues to be only having mortgage rights, he will not have any other right. Now, the question arose in these uh, Oti and uh, Kanyakumari district uh, usurpatory mortgages whether the mortgagee can prescribe title to the property which has been mortgaged in his favor. The court said there can be no adverse position by the mortgage. A usurpatory mortgagee can never prescribe adverse position at all. In fact, that the uh, judgment is. 2004, 6 SCC, 140. 2004, 6 SCC, 140. Now, what is, as I already explained, that the mortgagee has the right to lease the property. What are the terms of the lease? This should be within the period of the mortgage period. But mortgagor, who is, who is in position, not a usurpatory mortgagee, but the person who is in position of the property, what he, whether he has a right to lease and create further encumbrance and affect the rights of the mortgagee later, because when a mortgagee brings the property for sale and there are encumbrances or a lessee or a tenant in possession, the property will not be getting, fetching the same price as it is in a, it is a vacant position. So that is governed by Section 65A of the Transfer of Property Act. Which says that what are the terms and conditions on which the mortgager can lease the property? He cannot lease it beyond, uh, he should do it within six months from the date of creation of mortgage. He should not uh, extend it beyond three years. It shall be governed by the terms of the mortgage deed. So, all that has been prescribed under Section 65A of the Transfer of Property Act. So, the same principles are now embodied in the Surface Act also. And in the Surface Act, the latest judgment, 2019. 9 SCC, page 94, speaks about what type of leases are permitted under the surface law. Prior to the issue of the notice under section 13.2, if there has been a creation of a mortgage by the mortgage R, it is permitted under law, but not any lease which is created after that. That has been explained by the uh, Supreme Court in the latest judgment in 2019, 9 SCC, page 94. Now, a question arose whether uh, there can be an arbitration clause in a suits or mortgage, in a mortgage uh, contract. The Supreme Court in the, in the judgment reported in 2011, 5 SEC, 532, 2011, 5 SEC, 532 has said that a mortgage suit, a judgment in a mortgage suit is a judgment in rent. And therefore, these rights cannot be subject matter of arbitration. Therefore, mortgage suits, it is called a Booz Allen case. The name is called a Booz Allen case. And they have said that it is not arbitrable and it cannot be subject matter of arbitration. Next, we have, you can come across uh, several, uh, uh, some clauses like clog on redemption, CLOG, clog on redemption. What do you mean by clog on redemption? You would have learned in your colleges and all that, that when a sale deed is uh, given to you or a settlement deed is given to you, the property should be given to you free of any uh, restriction. Only then uh, you will be entitled to enjoy. What they say, you shall not alienate. You can enjoy for life, life, and uh, even after your uh, your years, uh, the sentence also will be enjoying for life, perpetuity, rule against perpetuity, all that we have come across. Same way, when you prevent uh, the mortgage from redeeming and enjoying the property. 
it is called as a clog on redemption. So in a mortgage deal, if it says that you shall redeem the property within 10 years, failing which you will lose your right of redemption, that clause is said to be invalid and void and it is said to be a clog on redemption. So such a doc or such a clause in a mortgage deal, which prevents a mortgager from redeeming his property, is amounting to a violation of the statutory uh, right given to the mortgage R. So it is called as a clog on redemption and it can never be enforced. Next we come to accession or improvements on the property. Suppose the mortgage R is in possession and uh, there are certain additions and improvements made by the mortgage R. Today I have a hut in a one acre plot. I will mortgage the one acre plot with the hut to the Mortgaging. Subsequently, uh, I put up a construction there in that one acre, palatial house and all that. I borrow from loan and all that, and I put up a construction. What happens? Whether the mortgagee is entitled to proceed against the entire property, or he has to go in search of his hut. That hut is no longer there, or even if the hut is there, he cannot restrict that to the hut because the entire one acre plot has been mortgaged. So. The mortgagee will be entitled to all the improvements which the mortgager makes on the mortgage property. Now, welcome, vice versa. Suppose the mortgagee, use of the mortgagee is in possession. Now, he is forced to take uh, by, by law or by some direction by the local authority says, you have to do this, you have to improve this property, it's going to fall down. Because in a use of the mortgagee, you all know that the man will be, the mortgagee will be in continuous position. Therefore, you will not be in a position to uh, ask the owner to uh, repair the property. So, the uh, creditor, uh, debtor is not going to come and do any repairs. So, whatever repair the mortgagee does or improvement he was forced to do in the property, and all that money will be treated as a principal for which interest will be charged and he will be entitled to impose it against the mortgage. Now, we have now learned what is a mortgage in various forms of mortgage. Now, what are the ways and means to realize the money, mortgagee's rights and mortgagee's rights? In the, under the common law, that is under the Civil Procedure Code, Order 34 prescribes the way in which you can enforce a mortgage. Now, Order 34 has clearly mentioned what will be the right of the mortgage or what will be the right of the mortgagee in other different mortgages. Suppose I file a suit for redemption. In the suit for redemption, it is either a simple mortgage or by deposit of title deeds. So, in those two cases, the mortgagee is entitled to a right of sale so that you may remember. So, in the redemption suit, the first prelim decree will be passed. What the prelim decree will say, okay, you have come to court, you have to pay the dependent so much of money, you will pay this money on or before a particular date. So that will be the first order. The court will quantify the amount due and payable by the mortgage or the mortgagee and that will be decided. That will be framed as a prelim decree. Now, if the prelim decree is obeyed, then the court will record the payment, full satisfaction, ask the defendant to hand over the documents, everything, and uh, the whole thing will be closed so that there will be no issues. Suppose the mortgage does not make the payment under the prelim decree. What is the remedy of the mortgagee? In the very same suit, the mortgagee can apply for a final decree asking for the sale of the property. He need not file a separate suit. Please note, if you go and see Order 34, Rule 2, 3, 4, 5, it is very beautifully it is written. In a suit for redemption filed by the mortgagee, if the mortgagee does not pay up the money as per the prelim decree, a final decree for sale of the hypotheca can be passed in the very same suit for redemption at the instance of the mortgagee. So the mortgagee gets a defendant, gets a relief in a suit filed by the mortgagee. It is very interesting to read order 34. Now, similarly, either where we have a right of foreclosure, like a mortgage by conditional sale and anonymous mortgages, where the power of sale is not there for the mortgage, but it is for, uh, they have a right of foreclosure. Similarly, in the suit for redemption, the defendant if they can come by way of final decree to ask the court saying that since he did not deposit the amount as per the prelim decree, please foreclose his right and say that he is not entitled to redeem the property. Such a right is given to the defendant in the suit for uh, redemption. And you all know that if the mortgagee comes by way of a suit for recovery of money, 
based on the mortgage. There'll be an initial preliminary decree asking the mortgage or defendant to make the payment, failing which the mortgagee can file a suit for sale or foreclosure as the case may be. So this is the uh, order 34. Now very same provisions, or uh, that is how to, instead of coming to court, the uh, banks and other financial institutions were finding it very difficult to realize their money. So the legislature had brought in the DRT Act, it uh, took the banks uh, institutions out of the purview of the service procedure court, then they brought in the further uh, improvement the way of a surface Act. So if you see provision section 16 to 17, they are almost similar to section 69. The application of section 69 and 69A of the Transfer of Property Act has been removed from the uh, uh, surface Act. They do not apply. But all other types of mortgages, registration, all that aspect is retained, but only enforcement is little different. Instead of order 34 CPC to enforce a mortgage, banks and other financial institutions are entitled to invoke surface C and the debt recovery act under uh, to enforce their mortgages. That's all. But the mortgage concept will be the same. Similarly, under sections 29 to 32 of the State Financial Corporation Act, a similar provision like uh, one under surface C is also there for a realization of the mortgage security, which has been offered to them. So this is the enforcement of mortgages. If you go to section 13 to 17 of Surface Act or 29 to 30 of Sector Financial Corporation Act, the mortgage is given very, very, very drastic power <coughs> to even go for a, a position. They can appoint receiver. They can take over the assets and management. They can even run the company. In fact, a very sweeping power is being given only because these security, uh, credit, secured creditors are all handling public money. And in the, in the case of public interest, whenever persons have borrowed and have defaulted, they don't need to wait in the court for immense uh, period of time to get back the money. At this point, I would like to make one thing clear. When I come to court by way of a mortgage, even if it's a mortgagee who brings the property for sale, the mortgager has got, the, he can pull the last straw at the last moment. How? Before the confirmation of sale, if you deposit the entire money in court, then the whole uh, sale is set aside. So all the effort of the mortgagee to file a suit, to pay, pay, make him obey the law, preliminary decree, final decree, sale, execution, everything will go to dogs the moment the mortgagee is for depositing the money before the confirmation of sale. So this is what is, uh, to avoid all that, this is a, even in these cases like 13 to 17 or 29 to 32 of the State Financial Corporation Act, if the mortgager deposits the money before the sale, the sale certificate is issued, then he's entitled to get back his property. He can save his property. That is because a man comes to borrows money only because of his indigent circumstances and he is not in the same bargaining power. So because he's not in the same bargaining power, he must be given a chance to get back and uh, enjoy his property without any difficulty. So he is given the last, till the last moment the sale certificate is registered, till the last moment the sale is confirmed under the CPC, he is given a right of redemption. In fact, in certain cases, they say the application to set aside sale has been dismissed in case which an appeal is filed. In the appellate stage, they make the payment of uh, the entire money. Redemption has been granted, say, appeal is only a continuation of the earlier proceedings. Even though there has been no stay and the sale certificate has been issued to the purchaser, in the appellate stage, the appellant has been, uh, the mortgager has been allowed to redeem the property. Next, but not, but not the least, I just have uh, three more points. Regarding the interest, which has to be uh, uh, charged over the mortgage suits under Order 34, is specifically provided under Order 34, Rule 11. So you cannot put your contractual interest but from the date of decree, it is only Order 34, Rule 11 will take it in, and not Section 34 of CPC. This is as far as the interest is concerned. Now, questions are asked as to what is the limitation for passing of a final decree? A preliminary decree is passed, and within three years, you have to file an application for passing of final decree. Otherwise, you lose your right to pass a final decree. Therefore, Article 137 of the Limitation Act will apply for passing of final decree. Uh, next is, there are, uh, there is one property. There are various mortgages. 
suppose five or six mortgagers, one of them want to discharge his uh, share and go. No, one partial redemption of one single mortgage is not allowed. He has to pay the entire money, discharge the entire mortgage, and seek for contribution from the co-mortgagers. He cannot say, no, I'll pay up my one fifth share. You please release my share. It is not possible at all. And that is the law on the subject. Now, with this, I think I have uh, come to the back end of my lecture. And I throw open the forum for uh, questions from the participants. Mr. Vikas? Yes, yes, ma'am. I'm just taking uh, the questions. Only though one has been posted so far. In fact, uh, the person who had posted it could do because somehow the internet has collapsed. Meanwhile, I can ask. Uh, Ma'am, like what you were saying, uh, I can ask a question meanwhile. Like what you said of the redemption, Order 21 Rule 90 also speaks of that once you uh, pay back the money along with 5% interest, even in that case, you can get the property back. Once yes, the property is auctioned. No, same. See, Order 21 Rule 89 Rule 90 has to be filed within 30 days from the date of sale. What this time is provided is 30 days, you have to sale should be confirmed. Within 30 days, if you have filed those two applications, then uh, the sale will not be confirmed. The moment an application under 2189 or 90 is filed in court, the executing court will not confirm the sale, it will be kept in abeyance. So in the meantime, if you make the payment, fine. If your obligation is dismissed and you go up in appeal, even in the upper stage, the court have said, yes, because normally what the court does, the moment they dismiss the application at 2189 or 2190, then the next order will be they take the next EP and say sale is confirmed. So, will that mean that my right of remedy to go to the appellate forum and challenge that order at 2189 goes? No. On the appeal, also I can seek for redemption, pay my money, and then it will be the sale certificate will be of no consequence. It will be set aside. This is by K. Shankaran. When a mortgage is of 1956 was not redeemed. Can mortgagee now sell it, sell the property? Yes, there is a law on the subject which says that it is a simple mortgage. If he, the mortgager has lost his power of redemption, then the mortgagee becomes the absolute owner. And this is by Angar. He says, can you explain the concept of charge vis-a-vis -vis mortgage? See, a charge is different from a mortgage. In the sense, charge is... Uh, actually, it will be like a, for a various other purposes, you can ask that it is like a maintenance. See, where uh, you know, the right is going to be created or suppose there is going to be a non-payment of sale price, a charge can be created. The creditor-debtor relationship will bring in mortgage. All other liabilities can for which you can secure it by way of a charge. So, please understand, in a charge, there can be no creditor-debtor relationship. Only when there is a creditor-debtor relationship, the security is treated as a mortgage. In all other aspects, where any amount is due and payable to you, which is secured by way of a charge, like uh, you suppose you are supplying some goods to a person and he doesn't uh, pay the money, you have a charge or a lien over the goods. Instead of uh, handing it over, you can say, I'll retain it. And that is a lien. That, that is called a charge. Similarly, we can have a charge over the stocks. In a maintenance suit, the, the lady is entitled to recover some money from the, it's not a debt. It is a sum payable by one X to Y. So in order to secure the payment of that uh, money, they could have a charge decree over a particular property. So the creditor data relationship will be significantly absent in a charge. So that is how Nuneet, <coughs> Nuneet, how does a mortgagee or a bank decide which is huh? the most beneficial mortgage? Sure, sir. <coughs> how does the mortgagee or a bank decide which is the most beneficial mortgage for him? No, I didn't follow you, sir. Sorry. <clears throat> it says, uh, how does a mortgagee or a bank decide which is the most beneficial mortgage? Wait, I'll just see the question. How this does it is by Navneet. <clears throat> the question is by Navneet. See that now the banks follow in, invariably simple mortgage and mortgage by deposit of the deeds. They have not adopted uh, the usable tree mortgage because mortgage uh, banks cannot take possession of the mortgage securities. They don't need that really. And conditional sale also because they don't take a sale deed in the name of the bank because that will result in a payment of additional stamps and additional expenses. The bonds, as of now, what I have understood uh, from what I have my experience is they take only simple mortgage and deposit of credit. Uh, 
this is by samisha you said that mortgagee becomes owner if not redeemed uh, is there is there any backing of the uh, uh, case law i i'll give the citation to you i'll give it not now i right now i don't have but i'll give it to you thank you uh this is um, by papya pani you have simplified the no that is a word of praise but i can read that because that is also required with the questions we are grateful to you for your wonderful lecture on the mortgage you have simplified the most tough subject to be understood by young uh, junior advocates we are grateful for your wonderful lecture you have simplified the most that's again repetition this again when they help if the original title deed or the property is not deposited with the bank and the mortgage by deposit of title deed is executed between the parties can the bank still proceed under the surface act or not there is no creation of mortgage at all there is no creation of mortgage deposit of the original title deed is a sign qua non for creation of a mortgage when there is no document deposit at all there is no mortgage at all uh this is by bank krishna krishna on the facebook please explain the difference between simple mortgage and deposit of title deed in a simple mortgage you have to be by a registered instrument there will be in a personal covenant to pay and there will be a stipulation as to payment of interest everything will be recorded in the document and it will be registered and attested as per law whereas in the memorandum of deposit of title deeds all that is not there the memorandum will only record that it is already been documents have already been deposited for a promissory note will be executed simultaneously to give a personal covenant to pay that is all there is be no registered document attested by two witnesses it will be only on the basis of the custody of the original documents the person can claim that there is a deposit of title deeds that's why in cases where there has been a loss of original documents of title anybody can take custody of the original documents and say he has given me the original documents and i have given him money so much therefore it amounts to deposit of title deeds that's why we give paper publication to our calling for third persons to say whether there has been lost or found and whether please you file an fir or not therefore custody of original documents is very important and if anybody has they can say i have a deposit of it even this can be oral also there's no requirement of any writing only in the recently in chennai they have said that your deposit of title deeds has to be registered and they have no because they have brought down the stamp value and they have said maximum of rupees so much only for a, a deposit of title deeds therefore there has been a, a spate of registration of deposit of title deeds also yeah uh, this is by lal tejwani in case of a symbolic possession by a bank can the mortgagee sell the property to a third person with or without bank's intervention what what can the mortgagee sell the property to a third party with or without bank's intervention no no see once thirteen four notice and possession has already been taken any transaction between a person is of no avail and uh, it is void it's not binding on the bank register himself will not register it sub register because they put on notice with the sub register also this is is there any uh, period of limitation for modt modt there is memorandum of deposit of title deeds are in the same position as a simple mortgage so even memorandum of deposit of title deeds person mortgage also has to sue within 12 years from the day the amount becomes due mortgage has 30 years to redeem angad can you explain the execution procedure when the suit for foreclosure is decreed can mortgage file application under order of 21 rule 90/91 what what uh this is by angad can you explain the execution procedure when the suit for foreclosure is decreed can hmm. the mortgage file an application under order 21 rule 90/91 oh you know suit for foreclosure 2190 will not arise because there's no sale In a suit for foreclosure, that's what I am saying. In a suit for sale, order twenty one rule eighteen and everything can be invoked because the property will be brought for sale. The executing court will bring the property for sale. There will be an actual sale taking place. But in a suit for foreclosure, there can be no execution proceedings at all. It will die with a uh, preliminary decree immediately followed by a final decree. They mortgage the plaintiff mortgage becomes the owner. 
That's all. So there's no question of 21, 18, and 90 in a suit for four cross. Uh, this is by Advocate Narayan Chen from Chennai itself. Whether the NCLT has jurisdiction on mortgage? NCLT will be deciding what is within their limitation. No. The mortgage is also part of the secured interest and they will divide. Finding out what is the secured interest, how they are going to balance it. They are not going to enforce the mortgage. They come to the enforcement only because they don't make the payment and they want a winding up. Your mortgage cannot be segregated and said that I want money on the mortgage. That is not the concept in NCLT. Another issue which invariably boils down is that uh, the banks have not created a charge in the, on the, of the property, but it has a title. So what preventive measures can be taken? Let's assume... Uh, in fact, that, was, that has been the biggest uh, problem because of the deposit of title deeds. In very many cases, the properties have been sold to uh, dishonestly and uh, by, uh, by committing fraud saying that the original documents are lost and uh, the property has been sold to third parties because nobody knows that the original documents are with the custody of a bank. That is only to obviate all that and to bring down that. We have now in Tamil Nadu, we have uh, brought in uh, legislation, which uh, registration of even deposit of title deeds has been made mandatory by bringing down the cost of stamps and registration. But the other in other parts of India, this particular aspect is still there. So the purchasers beware. Caveat emptor principle apply. If you don't have the original documents and with that you have gone and purchased a property, then in later point of time, the bank or any other person says the original documents are with me by way of a deposit. You have to pay and discharge that money also. That's a, that's an issue there. Then section 55 of TPA will come into being or no? 55 is uh, where this is regarding a sale. No. Registered sale deed. That is different. That's what I'm saying. Mortgage by conditional sale and uh, this is different. It is like a registered sale deed under 55, but conditions and uh, clauses in the sale deed will clearly point out whether it is a mortgage by conditional sale or an outright sale or an ostensible. Uh, this is by L.M. Venkat. Should MOD be registered? Uh, what is your take, ma'am? Yes, it should be registered in Tamil Nadu as well. So Tamil Nadu is concerned as be registered. No, no, she, uh, the question is in general, should MODs be registered? No, no. See, the MOD means the memorandum of deposit. It is the document which creates the mortgage. It has to be registered. If it is only a record of a past transaction where documents have been deposited, it does not require registration. If it says that, the, uh, the letter says, I have, if you can always have a format of the letter to the bank, it says, I on this day have deposited with the bank all these documents of title. That's all the letter will say. That means it is already deposited. It only a record of the deposit already made. It doesn't require registration. If on this day by this uh, by this document I hear with deposit the document, then it requires registration. Uh, this is by Samisha. If Section sixty nine is mentioned in the mortgage deed, then can it be sold by private negotiations without going for an auction? No, it, uh, if the contract, if the mortgage document permits private auction, private sale by the mortgagee, it can be done. Otherwise, it can be only by public auction. This is by Kuitag, lawyer. Is there any similarity between the Rent Controls Act with security interest and mortgage? Since now we have to register the rent control deeds as per the new laws. Is there any similar Rent Controls Act with security interest and Mortgage since now you have to register the rent controls deed as per new laws. See, le leasehold interest is also a security interest in law. See, where I have about 19 years lease over a property, I can secure it with the, it will be a security interest although the bank is concerned. The bank can bring that security interest also under the, uh, for, uh, for auction. So, the, the Rent Control Act, it, it is on a different platform. This is on a different platform. Rent Control Act will say that the existence of a lease. On that basis, you are going to advance loan. That is on a different now. It goes on a different platform. You can't combine both. Uh, Sadhana Kumari, should all whole, should all home loans be registered before the registrar? See, it all yes, home loans. Every home loan is being registered before the registrar. Every document where you raise a uh, get a loan, it is being registered by way of a simple mortgage. See. Sometimes the borrow will be 3 lakhs, but for 30,000 at least they go and make a registration to show that there is an encumbrance of the property so that you will not deal with the property without reference to the encumbrance. Mm -hmm. Advocate Narayan, right to foreclosure is a mandatory for individual mortgage even after final decree? 
no, no, final decree itself will be the uh, foreclosing decree. See that, I think you have not understood. In a suit for foreclosure, the mortgagee files a suit saying that, please uh, 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 declare that the mortgagee is not entitled to redeem the property. That will be the suit. The court will, what will do, it will give an opportunity to the dependent mortgagee to pay up the money and save his property. If he doesn't pay the money and save his property, then immediately he, they want, the plaintiff will file an application for passing a final decree. The final decree will say the mortgager, even after giving him several opportunities, failed to redeem the property. Therefore, he is debarred and foreclosed from redeeming the property. That's all. The whole thing ends there and the mortgage becomes the owner of the property. This is... Uh, Samisha posts privately. We have heard, madam, in the court, and today also the same spirit is being maintained. Uh, ma'am has remained same informative manner in the way she is in the courts. This is by Shah and Shah. Thank you. Um, I don't think we have more questions uh, because you have given the one Ram, uh, Ramnath is raised. Uh, I will unmute Mr. Ramnath. Mr. Ramnath. Mr. Ramnath, you will have to unmute yourself. We have, we are allowing you. Yes. Very good evening, madam. This is Ramnath. Okay. TK Seshad Research Junior. Madam, can you hear me? Yes, yes. sir. Ma'am, I have two questions, madam. One, if suppose within 12 years, suit was not filed for recovery of money. Next 30 years, he didn't file the suit for redemption. What happens to the documents, madam? In the encumbrance certificate, so the mortgage is reflected. Once the mortgagee loses his right to realize his money, then uh, there's no mortgage at all. The mortgagee can apply for uh, file a suit for recovery of the documents. It will be deemed discharged. So he has to file a suit for recovery of documents. Yes, yes. He need not go for redemption also. The right to uh, the right directly, he can file a suit. Yes, so he can directly go for recovery of documents. Yes, because the right to sue he is not deposit them. No, no, because uh, his right to sue is lost. One secondly, madam, if suppose, if suppose by uh, error, no interest has been mentioned in the simple mortgage document. Rate of interest. What is the rate of interest to be taken? If you have not contracted to pay interest, you cannot charge interest. See the contract under the contract, negotiable instrument. Sir. Negotiable instrument act is different. Under the contract, the terms of contract will govern. If you have not stipulated any term in the contract for payment of interest, you cannot impose any payment of interest. You will be entitled to interest only after but, the uh, after the decree, not prior to decree. But but under the Negotiable Instruments Act, there is a particular section under which even if the promissory note does not contain a rate of interest, that will not you apply. can uh, still file a suit. That will not apply to mortgage. That will not apply. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma this is the last question we are taking. Uh, consequences of a non-registration of decree once property is redeemed by paying amount pending suit. Consequence of non-registration of decree. Yes, sir. Conse uh, consequences of a non-registration of a decree. Once property is redeemed by paying uh, the pen, uh, by paying amount pending suit. Have they not got a full discharge satisfaction uh, before the court? That is sufficient. Even if there's no non-registration, it's not a no. It's not fatal. The difficulty is it will be reflected in the register of assurances. So you have to tell that that amount is no longer due. It has already been discharged by a decree of. That's all. FSMO is sufficient. Uh, thank you, ma'am. In fact, we have been receiving the questions and at the same time, the prayers that you have been very elucidatedly explained all the issues. That goes without saying, at least I can, I feel quite satisfied that the issues which could have been raised in the mind of anyone, but itself in the lecture, you had clarified that. But the questions which were raised, they were also explained in that. Easy That's very, 
tough subject and every time there will always be confusion when it comes to obligation. Unless you are a typical trial lawyer who has practiced on the trial side on mortgage suits. Otherwise, you in fact, you know how to extend uh, the litigation in a mortgage suit. That frustrated the legislature to bring in surface and DRT. <laughs> In fact, it is a clerk's domain in the trial court, not the advocate's domain. That's true. That's true. Uh, so, uh, before we part for the day, tomorrow's uh, webinar would be reverse burden clauses and presumption of innocence. That is by Mr. Biljinder Sra, an additional district judge, come member faculty, Chandigarh Judicial Academy. So, do stay connected with us tomorrow at 4 p.m. And uh, I, on behalf of Beyond Law CLC, and all those participants who have participated on the platform, as well as those who have watched us live on the Facebook, and also those who will watch us uh, subsequently when we upload the video link on the YouTube. Uh, thank you, Chitra, ma'am, for. Uh, I'll also the PPT to you, Mr. Rika. So I've, I've, I've stated that that we will be posting those PPTs on the Beyond Law Group. And those who have not subscribed to the YouTube channel of Beyond Law CLC, they can do so that they can get all the YouTube links of all the webinars which we have conducted. Everyone stay safe and stay blessed. And thank you, everyone. Namaskar. Thank you.